Welcome to Make Your Money Matter. I'm your host, Brad Barrett. I'm also a managing director and partner here at One Capital Management. Have you ever heard of the Setting Every Community Up for Retirement Enhancement? You probably know it as the SECURE Act. It was originally signed into law in 2019 and was drafted to assist Americans in saving and investing for retirement. It was the first major retirement-related legislation really since 2006 and increased access to tax advantage savings programs. It incentivized retirement planning and contained several provisions to diversify the options available to savers. And I wanna give you some insight today on this act, if you will, because it's something we should all be informed about. But before I do, smash that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single episode. All right, let's get into it. Okay, at the end of 2022, Secure 2.0 was passed to expand the legislation and further build on retirement savings opportunities, which is why I'm bringing it up to you today. There were three goals with this. Encourage people to save for retirement, provide additional flexibility, and reduce the employer cost of setting up a retirement plan. Here's what you should be aware of as an individual or small business owner if you're watching this right now. For individuals, the starting age for required minimum distributions, RMDs, was increased, all right? Mandatory withdrawals from retirement accounts now start at age 73. This is for individuals born in 1951 or later and increased to age 75 for those born in 1959 or later. So these require new retirement plans to include auto enrollment and auto escalation, which is another great thing for you as an employee and for employers to know. So 401k and 403b plans that are established after 2024 are required to auto enroll participants at a starting deferral rate of 3% of pay and increase the contribution rate annually by 1% until it reaches at least 10%. But again, this won't go, this won't be more than 15%. So it's an interesting added thing there for plans initiated after 2024. Now, by the way, you should all know, employees, for all of you watching, uh, can choose to opt out, okay? Workplace-based Roth accounts are exempted, again, from lifetime RMDs. Now, previously, only Roth IRAs were exempt from RMD requirements during the life of the account holders. RMDs were still required from Roth 401k and Roth 403b plans. The exemption here uh, is extended to workplace-based Roth accounts effective in 2024. Now, switching gears for a quick second, 529 plan rollovers to Roth IRAs, those beginning in 2024 increase up to $35,000 can be rolled from a 529 plan to a Roth IRA in the beneficiary's name. This is subject to annual limits, but that's the way it's written, right? The 529 plan here must be open at least 15 years to do this. Now, in addition, the beneficiary must have earned income and 529 contributions and earnings from the last five years aren't eligible. Household employees, okay, they're now eligible for SEP IRAs. So employers of domestic employees, uh, for example, nannies, they can now provide retirement benefits under a SEP IRA. This is the uh, new uh, treat as spouse option for inherited IRAs is also new. So spouses who inherit IRAs now have the option to elect the descendants age for RMD purposes. For our widows and widowers, uh, those deceased spouses was younger. This change allows them to defer RMDs past the normal start date. Uh, there's also catch-up contributions for employees who have aged 60 to 63 have also increased. Uh, while catch-up contributions are available to all employees age 50 and over, they are increased by 50% or $10,000, whichever is greater. For employees that are age 60 to 63, this becomes effective in 2025. Now, to illustrate here, if the regular catch-up is 7,500, then the catch-up for employees that are ages 60, 63 is 11,250, okay? Just to give you some parameters there. There are also increased contribution limits uh, for qualified longevity annuity contracts. Sometimes they're known as QLACs, QLACs. Uh, individuals can purchase QLACs using funds from their IRA or retirement plan, which allows them to defer RMDs beyond the normal starting date. There's also maximum lifetime transfers from tax deferred accounts to QLACs, they've also been increased to $200,000. Retirement savings, um, the what we call the lost and found, here's the thing, within two years, the Department of Labor will establish an online portal to enable individuals to search for lost retirement accounts. This as an advisor is a big deal, okay? These are forgotten 401ks with prior employers. I can't tell you in our discovery meetings how often this comes up. So that'll be a great thing starting here in a couple years that there'll be a portal to look through. Okay, for my small business owners, small businesses receive tax credits, for many of you who know this, for retirement plan 
contributions. Now, effective this year, 2023, small businesses receive a tax credit for contributions made on behalf of non-highly compensated employees for the first five years the plan is in existence. The maximum credit is $1,000 per employee. Employers with up to 50 employees will receive a full credit in year one. This is a phase out apply here in, in years two through five. Uh, and those employers with 51 to 100 employees will also phase out a little bit there as well. Now, increased tax credit for small businesses who start new retirement plans is also something that's noted in the SECURE Act 2.0. Now, beginning also in 2023, there's a tax credit to small employers. This is up to 50 employees, that's what they consider small, for out-of-pocket costs related to starting a retirement plan. This is expanded for up to $5,000 per year for three years. Now, employers of uh, with, with employees of 51 to 100, they can receive a partial credit of up to $5,000. There's also long-term part-time employees have the right to contribute uh, to 401ks and 403bs sooner than before. Uh, speaking of part-time employees, uh, those who work at least 500 hours in three consecutive 12 month periods must actually now with new laws be allowed to make elected deferrals to employer 401k plans effective now. And time is reduced to two 12 month periods beginning in 2024. So with all this being said, employers can now make matching contributions on a Roth basis as well. Effective right now, employers can make matching contributions on an after-tax basis to employees' Roth accounts. These contributions are considered taxable income to the employee, the Roth, right? Catch-up contributions are required to be made on an after-tax Roth basis. And in effective in 2024, all catch-up contributions made by participants with wages over $145,000 will be made to the plan's Roth account, new in-plan emergency savings account as well. So starting in 2024, again, non-highly compensated employees can contribute up to $2,500 in after-tax money to pension-linked emergency savings accounts. Funds can now be accessed quickly and on a penalty-free basis. All this being said, employers can opt to automatically enroll participants at a rate of up to 3% of pay, as we discussed earlier, and there's new small incentive allowances for contributing to a retirement plan. There's also small uh, de minimis incentives, such as low dollar gift cards uh, can now be provided to employees to help improve participation in 401k plans and 403b plans. Uh, new employer match contributions on behalf of employees who are paying student loans. There's a lot of really cool benefits in this, in this new Secure Act 2.0. Now, while many employees are unable to save for retirement through their employer's plan because they are paying off things like student loans and therefore miss out on an employer match, Beginning in 2024, employers are allowed to make matching contributions on behalf of these employees to, again, 401ks, 403bs, 457, and simple IRA plans, even if the employees don't contribute to these plans. Employers can match the amount that an employee repaid to student loan debt during that year. This is a really great thing for everyone out there, both employers and employees. Um, and they can play up to the employee 401k deferral limit for that year obviously less than any retirement plan deferrals that the employee tends to make. Employers can choose to direct matching contributions to the retirement plan or to the employee's student loan debt or both, subject again to plan limits. It's pretty cool. Employer matches on student loan debt repayments are tax deductible against corporate income and exempt from FICA tax in the same manner as employer matches to a qualified retirement plan. Really cool stuff in that whole segment there. Uh, starter 401ks or 403b plans, this is new plan design, uh, allows employers to create a plan, account funded by employee contributions where participants are auto-enrolled to contribute 3 to 15% of pay unless they opt out. Uh, there's contribution limits uh, for these starter plans. Uh, they're equal to IRA contribution limits, but so they're still around that same limit adjustments there. And these arrangements are not subject to top-heavy or discrimination rules, which is great too. This reduces the administration burden of maintaining a retirement plan. This is only, by the way, a partial list of the new provisions and changes going into effect over the next few years. Thanks for watching our show today. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And always remember, make your money matter.